Welcome everyone, Questini here with a discussion about Total War Warhammer 3 Mortal Empires. And in this particular video, what I'm going to be doing is going over just the basics, if you will, of a campaign. Because despite what you might hear, there are still plenty of people that are jumping in Total War Warhammer 3. Or maybe people purchased it, but didn't really play it until this particular point. That's happening. I mean, there's plenty of people quick quitting Warhammer 3, but there's also just as many people that are coming into Warhammer 3 at this particular time. Now, when you start a campaign, you'll typically start with one settlement, generally speaking a provincial capital in a territory where you're at war with another faction that is set up for you to defeat. In this case, as Karl Franz, who has the most popular campaign in the entirety of Warhammer 3, uh, based on the player numbers, based on polls, based on Creative Assembly's own statistics, we do start with Altdorf and we're at war with the Imperial Secessionist. Now, in many campaigns, in fact, in virtually all campaigns, with the exception of like this one and a couple of others, um, the faction that you start at war with is not a faction that you can't get a peace treaty with. So this is a bit of an exception as a campaign because you cannot get a peace deal with the Imperial Secessionist, which makes sense because they're Secessionist and you are the Emperor, so you cannot tolerate that. Now, when you're not playing him, just a note, um, when you're not playing him, Karl Franz starts with this entire province. I think, like, it made sense within the context of Warhammer 2. It doesn't necessarily make sense in the context of Warhammer 3 because it just means he's going to be lower experience than he could be. Now, we obviously want to deal with the Imperial Secessionist, so the first thing that I'm going to do, well, the first thing you might be tempted to do when you're starting a campaign is to go deal with them. But this is actually not the very best choice that you can make in this particular campaign. The very best choice when you start any campaign, and it doesn't matter which one we're talking about, but the very, very best choice you, you can make when starting any particular campaign in the game is to take a look at the diplomatic options that you have, trade agreements, declarations of war, potentially, like over here, I'm going to declare war on Katrin's initial foe in exchange for a trade agreement and a bit of money. And I'm going to do this for various factions. The reason is this is a way of getting some early money because many of these factions, like many of the factions uh, over here that I am just declaring war on, are not factions that are really going to bother me. But I'm achieving two things over here. One, uh, one, I am getting some diplomatic deals, so I'm improving my diplomatic status. And two, I am improving, um, I am improving my financial situation. So that is the benefit of this particular campaign by doing so. Now, in some campaigns, you'll have more choices than, than others, and you. It is important to understand your starting situation in which declarations of war make sense and do not. So for instance, all the declarations of war that I did just declare over there make perfect sense within the context here. I could declare war on the Fekendites, but I think I'm going to wait one turn. In many cases, it is worth doing it on turn one before the AI has done anything because you're always going to start the campaign in the same situation, but sometimes it's worth waiting one turn. The reason I want to wait with Hockland is they start a war with Festus, so Festus is always going to take one of their settlements, destroy their army because he starts over here next to their army. He's going to destroy one of their settlements, so Hockland will give me a lot of money for that on turn two. But most of the time, you want to decide to engage in diplomacy on turn one, turn two. And you want to keep doing this throughout the course of your campaign. Don't be aware that the AI will cross large distances to just attack you. So, for instance, the Greenskins here that I just declared war on, they are going to come for me if um, if uh, Bretonia is not going to do anything against them. But I know Bretonia is going to do something against them, so I am not concerned at all. Now, with all that in mind, and mind you, this is with some mods, chiefly an auto resolve mod, Ch Toggle Fog of War, just for demonstration purposes and all that. But, like, fight this battle, you will generally get better results if you fight battles manually. You might have entire campaigns in this game where you might think, oh, I could just auto resolve my way for this campaign. That is not really the case in 
many campaigns. There's several reasons why you don't want to auto-resolve. Yes, I'm using mods over here, but it is just a much better result if you do fight these battles manually. You'll get more experience, more money most of the time. Uh, and what... And crucially, you will actually lose less men. Depends on the battle. There are some major field battles where you can avoid taking as many casualties. Now, take your first settlement. I'll talk about looting, occupying, or sacking a settlement, or raising a settlement. I would say raising a settlement never makes sense unless you're just doing that to harass the enemy. Most of the time you want to occupy it one way or another. But still. But, um, and it might be worth it, especially if you're starting in a province where you don't control the provincial capital, because you might want to get a rebellion. The way rebellions work, just very quickly, if you control the provincial capital, a rebellion will always start by this, uh, the provincial capital. If you start in control of a minor settlement, the rebellion will always trigger by that first minor settlement you're taking in a province. Remember that particular point. Now, in terms of leveling up, I have a particular strategy on this, and it works well with the vast majority of legendary lords, but keep in mind it does differ from campaign to campaign, from legendary lord to uh, legendary lord. But most of the time, I'd say getting Root Marcher, 5% campaign movement range, as well as Inspiring Presence is something you always want to do with the vast majority of lords. Now, after that, what I usually do is get three points in an army skill. Because, like, your lord at a lower level, even if you're spending a couple of points, is not going to be that powerful. You could start, you know, spending points to make them powerful in battle, but without quest items, without items, without their special skill line, they just won't be that great. So I prefer improving the army as opposed to improving the lord. Though, keep in mind, we'll improve the lord's combat ability later on. So over here for Carl friends, I'll go down the pistol core, uh, path and then i'll stop the reason i'll stop is because i want to save up points until he gets to rank 12. so over here right i'm already rank three get three more points so that's going to be rank six stop wait until you get to rank 12 and this is the case for the absolute majority of lords and get then get the special skill line some exceptions so it's not a fundamental rule for every campaign but some exceptions now another thing you want to do this is turn one. Another thing you want to do is in a number of campaigns that I'm not in every one of them, you may, if you want to be very aggressive and being aggressive early on is quite important, one of the things you may want to do is get the second lord and start some global recruitment. In this particular case, it makes sense. So I get the second lord. I'm going to get Root Marcher and Grand Hammer Sigmar. I'm not going to get Inspiring Presence for him because he's not really going to have these troops for a very long time. And I want to go down the Grand Soul uh, Fire path over here for that Arch Lecter. But it depends on what you're playing. Like, I still want that campaign movement range here. And the reason I want uh, those troops is because I'll be able to take... You know, I'll, I'll be able to send them to Carl France to reinforce the army. And then my goal over here is to take Helmgard as quickly as possible. So let's just skip on ahead to that because this is, you know, on turn two, I'm going to move to the edge of Uberstrike. On turn three, I'll force march this army and transfer the troops to Carl France. When you force march, your troops are tired. But if you transfer them to another army, they're not going to be tired anymore. It's a bit silly, but it does work like that. Um, I also have a secondary army over here in Helmgard. What the AI decides to do with these kind of armies, well, there's usually an AI behavior. It uh, AI behavior depends on difficulty, and not campaign difficulty, battle difficulty dictates the AI behavior from my experience. Campaign difficulty affects the resources that the AI has, maybe their build order, I'm not entirely certain, I think it's just resources, whereas it's battle difficulty that affects what they're going to do with their army, specifically their aggression with their armies. I think it's tied to the auto result because battle difficulty affects auto result. Regardless, let's move on a couple of turns. Okay, so turn five, I have taken Helmgard. I spent the end turn recruiting uh, units over there, and I also recruited two more units of archers over here for this secondary army. And the way I've leveled this army is I've gotten the Grand Soulfire. I will get Inspiring Presence soon enough, and Pistol Core as well. Now, here's one important thing to mention about a lot of campaigns. You might think that there is a particular path that you should go on. And in Carl Francis's case, certainly that's the case, that you do kind of want to follow the path. 
But a particularly important point is you're not necessarily locked in down that path. Is you should actually maybe go against what the can what the developers may have designed a particular campaign for. For instance, just a particular example. The dwarves over here, Welcome, the Karak Ziflin, who I have a trade agreement with, they're at war with the Bretonians of Bastan. Now, who wins or not over here is immaterial. But what is important is that Bastan starts with Montfort. And depends on the AI behavior, I might have been able to take Montfort before the dwarves. And then I could have sold it to the dwarves. Specifically, if I sold it with the barracks. Like, one of the things I would have done is... I would have destroyed any building that was in it, in it, dismantled it, built a barracks, and then sell it, sold it to Garrick Ziflin. This would have actually helped them out because it would have give them, given them an undersellment for your know, recruitment because they only have one. And the AI is really bad at uh, its uh, building priorities. And secondly, it would have given me a ton of money. But because they took Montfort, which is a usual occurrence, I am not going to go for that. Instead, what I am going to do over here is go for Mariam Bergoyas. Another thing, and this is specific with the Order factions, is that you can get Gotrek and Felix relatively early on. It's usually some control buildings over here. I got the tap room for some control. You're going to want control for the sake of preventing rebellions. There is a penalty, a public order modifier that you do have to deal with. I am using a mod that removes that. Uh, but usually you will have to deal with that. But rebellions are not really a downside in a campaign. I just find them personally an annoyance that I don't want to deal with. Uh, and so I am using something like that. But rebellions can give you a lot of money and experience, especially because you can trigger them. Like, for instance, I could have occupied, looted and occupied every single one of these elements and got, certainly gotten a rebellion in Altdorf by this point. Which would have been beneficial for the sake of Carl Francis's experience over here. But that's not what I'm going to get. Okay. So now I am over here in control of this province. I am still at war with various factions. Though only one of them really is a danger. Potentially a second one. Though, no, actually, they have gotten wiped out. I've also declared war on Festus. But that's because I wanted money from Hawkland. Who have lost their capital over here. Though, I apparently, like Imperial Authority, didn't really get affected by it all that much. Certainly, the Empire is crumbling around me. There are various com campaign mechanics to deal with. In the case of Karl Franz, the one thing you have to deal with is Imperial Authority, which makes the entire diplomacy game that you're playing kind of pointless. The Empire would be so much better without Imperial Authority, because you would just play the Confederation game. Like, the way to confederate a faction or factions, is to get good relations with them, be much stronger than them. And strength, and, and just those two things. You need, like, like confederations have, like, 150, like, I'll use Marienburg, for instance, right? Like, confederations have a baseline evaluation. If you improve your diplomatic relations, you remove, it's basically a penalty. But if you have, like, 150, then that baseline evaluation goes down. But it's also affect uh, something related to faction strength. With regards to military alliances, military alliances do affect uh, kind of in a hidden way faction strength because that military alliance is going to count in a kind of hidden way towards faction strength and it's going to make it seem, and yes I am going to declare war on Marienburg, because I kind of want them to start, mar uh, start marching towards me over here. And if they don't march toward, so if their army marches towards me over here, I will certainly defeat it. But even if they don't, and maybe they won't, but even if they don't, I can still take advantage of that situation. Regardless, I've decided to go for Marienburg. You don't have to, but there's various benefits towards uh, towards doing so. Really, anyway. Um, what um, what confederations? Something that's not available in this campaign, but for the vast majority of campaigns in the game, like Cast Dwarfs notwithstanding, just taking advantage of the diplomatic situation. Also, one thing worth pointing out, there's another penalty with confederations. Uh, the penalty is that when a faction conquers a territory, not if you trade it with them via diplomacy, but if they take a territory or region on their own, 
then there is a penalty for like what seven turns or something like that and it is a fairly substantial penalty that does get the play now marienburg has decided to move their army over here maybe they're moving in an ambush position or i think i've they've, they're moving the fort right there regardless that's particularly important okay hawkland has been destroyed as expected uh, this is specific to the Empire, you always want to demand a return because it will give you Imperial authority. Now, research-wise, faction depends on faction to faction. Over here, growth is generally something good to get. Casualty replenishment, if you can get the faction-wide, but really, this is very faction-specific. For the Empire, I want to get your recruit rank for Warrior Priests and Witch Hunters uh, first off because Summon it's the really Electric nice counts. there. Now, I know this army is going to be here. Now, I could just attack this army, but it would be a pretty difficult battle, right? Between uh, me and them. So, what I'm going to do instead is I am going to recruit some troops, some uh, some swordsmen. I'm also going to recruit another lord because I kind of want I want to give him that. Um, I, I want to get Gotrick and Felix there. They're too damn useful to ignore and i'm setting up an ambush now the important thing about ambush uh, baiting ambush baiting over here is this the ai even when you move an army like this the ai is not necessarily going going to act in a proper way but more importantly the way to bait the ai is to leave yourself in kind of a vulnerable position with it so What's a vulnerable position? It's a settlement that's constructing. It's an army in force march. It's an army that's recruiting. That's what the AI considers vulnerability. And it will almost always do this. Now, they spotted me here in this position, so it's going to be a field battle. But it is a battle I would win. Like, no problem. Sure, they might have higher tier units, kind of. But, you know, I got a legendary lord. I've got the magic caster. I got the second lord who has goldfire. I'm not losing this battle. So this is one of the things you can do, and with that process, and with that, with doing that, I've eliminated their principal army. Now, when you eliminate an army like of the AI like this, it's gonna take them one turn to get that army back if it's their last a quest, and we get the quest battle. I'll talk about these uh, in just a second. But okay, so we've taken out Marienburg's principal fighting force over here with Carl Franz. Your legendary lords can always attack a settlement instantly. Your secondary lords cannot. We're just going to get Gotrek and Felix over here. Just recruit them. Now, I got to be a bit considerate of some f uh, various aspects here so we're just gonna go do some global recruitment over here what orders following Sigmar's path okay as you can see Bretonia has dealt with uh, the greenskins as I expected them to do so and over here we're just going to fight this particular bell no problem we could just occupy the sound loot and occupy right it can be worth master. doing uh in quite a few situations and i'm just going to dismiss the stables the reason i'm going to dismiss the stables although i may just want to recruit two units over there of pistoliers is because even though it's going to be a major hit in terms of public order for one turn it's still worth doing because well money <laughs> ultimately you want to get a lot of money now you could sack settlements and and, but hacking a settlement will reduce its level by one, and occupying any settlement will also reduce its level by one. So sacking a settlement may not necessarily be the best idea. And then we're also going to fight the quest battle. Now, one important, per uh, two important things about quest battles. One, virtually every quest battle has the five thousand treasury reward the item that you're going after and 10 percent casualty replenishment for two turns this is actually a very important point that casualty replenishment is enormously useful for many factions that may have poor casualty replenishment the empire doesn't have casualty replenishment until they get the settlement to tier three i'm not maybe i should upgrade the fourth because there are some factions over there always be considerate of your flanks like always be considerate of your sides and one of the reasons you want to fight battles manually unless you're using a resolve mod and even with that you might still want to fight them manually uh, is because 
if you don't fight them manually, you take casualties, which affects your strength ranking, which means that factions looking at a side, like Kamler over here, who I share a border basically with right now, may decide, yeah, I'm just going to go after these guys. Okay, regardless of that, we're just going to get Gotrek and Felix to recruit a bunch of units, maybe even switch them to um, recruitment, uh, to recruitment commandment. This is why maintaining control of full province is very important. Another thing that's also important, growth. Getting a lot of growth very quickly in a province is important because it will allow you to get it to tier 3 pretty damn quickly. So over here you can see that all my settlements are already moving towards the tier 2 direction, so I'll be able to get to tier 3 pretty, uh, pretty quickly on Altdorf itself, which will unlock various benefits like Mage Recruitment, Battle Wizard Recruitment, uh, Shrines of Sigmar, and even Artillery Recruitment if I really want to go for it. Nah, particularly fond of that. I could actually get rid of the this particular building, but I think I'll wait until I'm starting to get Altor to tier 3 to do so, just, you know, stabilize the public order right there. So next up, I'll take fort to uh, the fort, I'll take all of these territories, and I'll end up right here. Now, there is a war going on, though in this case it does seem to be going on a slow pace, which is a bit weird, though Ostermark is on the chopping, Black Sturtland lost one territory, got it back, uh, everyone else seems fine, like, it's a bit weird, like, you kind of expect, um, right. you kind of expect some of these factions yes. to have lost the territory, but it is going to happen, <laughs> uh, it is certainly going to happen, like, one of the things I used to believe in this particular campaign is that it was really important to deal with Festus as quickly as possible, I can't necessarily say I hold that particular opinion anymore, because one of the things you realize is like, well, no one's really going to attack you over here, because these, this, like, one thing to understand by AI behavior, even if they hate their guts, the AI doesn't necessarily want to get involved in multiple wars. So, as long as Norlis ends in their war with the, uh, the scaling, the scaling will not attack you. As for Wolfric, yeah, he might attack you eventually, but he's got his own issues as well. So, it's actually fairly safe to expand in this particular direction of Maribor. That's one thing. The safest expansion path might be one you might think originally think is dangerous, but it's actually really safe. So, what I'm going to do here, take the fort, take these elements, end up over here at Wrecker's Point. But instead, an opportunity has presented itself. Specifically over here, Kemmler has decided that what he's going to do is go to war with Marienburg, because he saw them as being vulnerable, he wiped out his initial enemy, but now he himself is vulnerable to, well, me screwing him over like this. So instead, I'm just going to declare war on him. And this is absolutely something that I can take advantage of. If I wanted to be extra sneaky in this situation, I could have actually gotten a peace treaty with Marienburg and decided, you know what, I'm just going to, you know, I, I'm just going to take out Kemmler, but I expect to be paid by Marienburg to do so, and I might even sell their city back to them. And start building such diplomatic relations to uh, confederate them, because you are not limited to confederation with Marienburg. Now this is a bad idea for now it's a bad idea for a couple of reasons. One of those reasons is that Bretonia doesn't really like Marienburg, so chances are if you do that, they're probably going to end up declaring war on Marienburg, especially after you wipe them out, wiped out their main army, and even if they do still have their main army, they might still um screw you over. But still, um one thing to understand is like taking advantage of that like you can make friends out of people you just beat the shit out of <laughs> in this case like yeah like i could make friends of marienburg i've decided not to because like if it wasn't for a fact that i had already taken their capital city i um you know i might have been tempted to be friends, but since I've taken their capitals, I really couldn't care less. So I'm just going to keep recruiting units over here. And I am going to march, keep marching against Kemmler. And now we've gotten all of these skills for Carl France. So we've gotten Lord Recruit Rank, Unit Experience Gain, uh, Hero Capacity for um, Imperial Captains, Get Pistol Core over there. 
and you know just get the purple sun for the mage for mages it's pretty simple what you want to increase right just get good spells that you want to use but i would not bother with having every spell i'd rather upgrade them because yeah they're just better and cheaper more importantly um so if we look like at this uh, particular um, mage you, you see the winds of magic cost reduction right for the upgraded version and also the passive ability is particularly useful you may also want to get like things like scouting for the uh, for a mage uh, right there. Things like casualty replenishment are pretty important, training, all that kind of stuff for other heroes, not mage heroes. Uh, in terms of melee skills, I would bother with things like survivability for heroes initially, because, yeah, initially they're not going to do a lot of damage, so improving their survivability so they can at least tank a couple of hits, pretty important. And why I'm doing right here, going against Marienburg is certainly against both my campaign victory conditions and kind of like what the game wants you to do. And I'm not going to stick around in Bretonia. At, not at all. I am just going to go there and piss off, well, maybe the old Baston as well. You know, just pick a fight with them if they're still alive. I'm guessing they are. You know, pick a fight with them. Oh, we see Kazrak moving into position to attack me. I guess he's been doing nothing but just building units. We got... Cafe and caravans showing up over here. Cafe does present you these kind of opportunities with their caravans. And I do see you, Kazrak. I do see you very clearly there. He's going to try and take all Isleheart. Not surprising. I guess he's deciding Midland is not worth putting a Hearthstone on. But still, let's just say we're straying. And yes, we lost... A bunch of Imperial Authority right there when we got another quest battle, which um, in this case I can't actually deal with that. What I'm going to do here is move this particular army right here. Put them in an ambush. It's not likely going to succeed. But we can at least... And I'm just going to move Gotrik and Felix Champion in Force March. I won't be able to recruit this turn, but that's fine. Declare war on a bunch of factions. Speak with conviction and some that have no particular relevance for me. I ex yeah. so, who calls? It is not I could even get the Priest Tree with, him, with Kemler if I wanted to. But there's various things I do want to do right here. In the name of the One of those is destroying these caravans. Don't attack the major Cafean factions, especially if you're anywhere close to them. Don't do so. Because it's not going to be a great idea. But these minor factions... Like the caravan... Uh, the value of the caravans has certainly gone down by quite a bit. Uh, but it's still money. And more crucially, it's still experience. So now with that sorted out of the way... I can go after Galmaraz, I can improve this particular settlement. Right Let's take a look at what we can yes. get. Like, regiments right now are available. I so, yeah, I guess I am just gonna go for Galmaraz. I'm and feeling Prince fairly Andrew comfortable Andrew. with these forts right here, so, like, don't do stuff like this. If an enemy are, if you're close to an enemy, where they might attack you, though. Galmaraz is not a particularly tricky battle. And yeah, more casualty replenishment, more money. And now we can set Altdorf to a tier 3, uh, uh, to go to tier 3. Which is going to take a couple of turns, so four turns. Uh, four turns for that. Gonna probably want to get rid of this, but I'm just gonna wait until, you know, it's just one turn away. I'm gonna get hold the line, hard to hit. Full plate armor. Gonna get some scouting with the mage finally. And Kazrak may take the bait here, or he may attack my capital. If he attacks my capital, not particularly worried. Because um, the defenders. Like, the reason you shouldn't be worried about these kind of armies, like, if he attacks the capital, he might attack it instantly. But by default, settlements have a significant unresolved benefits, especially capitals. And also have lure, you know, I've, I've set a nice, lo lovely trap for him with, like, one army and, four, you know, ambush, an ambush stance with another one. Uh, that's not the full stack. You know, enforce, enforce march stance. 
Snake. Let's see if he takes the bait. Now, my goal is to ultimately destroy uh, Marion Burke there, but, I, you know, just taking time to recruit the units. Gotrin and Felix are really nice because uh, for the purposes of recruiting an army like this, because you don't have to care about them gaining levels because they can't. There are mods that make them permanent lords, I think, like Lord and Hero. Um, it's a bit weird to think Gotrek is in charge, but because he's not really a leader. And as expected, the AI falls for that, because of course they do. It would have been better if I could have moved some of the units from Gotrek. You deal with what you got. And now... I will hear your petition, but... Yeah. A comp Get paid. <laughs> the good thing about attacking minor cafein factions, they're typically going to be at war with other factions, so they're possibly going to accept any kind of terms that you offer them, so that's great. Take advantage of it. Use it. Now, mind you, the results that I'm getting right here are only possible if you minimize lo losses in battle. Because if you take a lot of casualties in battle, then the AI is just going to think, Oh, this guy is really weak, so we can just screw him over. We don't need to deal with that. Don't... Like, that is a really bad... <laughs> uh, that is a really bad decision-making by the AI from my perspective. Let's just... Yeah, around um, army composition-wise, it does depend. Like, I'm not worried about this army taking you know, Marienburg. And even if they siege it, I'm just going to move Gotrek and Felix over here. Um, even if they besiege it, like, if they attack Gotrek and Felix, good luck with that. Good luck to them, I, I gotta say. Um, so we're just going to take that settlement with the secondary army. And Carl Franz will move Fight over here against the settlement. There is an army over there that's holding Ready. that particular uh, settlement. Okay, uh, could go destroy Bastan, but it does seem like the dwarves and the dwarves have decided to not continue that particular fight. So, I'm not necessarily interested in it although you know i could so just gives various man um magic benefits what i want is arcane conduit now i've maintained my imperial authority just barely there's a couple of events so, I, like, as the Empire, you're in this kind of position where the game is like, oh yeah, you really have to care about the Empire. It's like, you should do the minimal possible for stuff like that. Summon the Elector Counts. Although here I'm gonna get rid of an Archer unit to get the, those Outrider launchers. They're really good, so yeah, the cost is worth it. <laughs> And while my economy is certainly going in the gutter because of it, um, I mean, I think it's worth it. Will I keep the Forest of Arden? Will I abandon it? I'll trade the territory to the dwarves and the mountains, and maybe trade Forest of Arden to Bretonia. Hmm. Interesting decision. One Karstein sends his minions I could also help Lewin Leonker. I could be a bit tricksy over here, actually. With regards to Musalon and all that. So basically, right at this point, there is no army except Grom, who's a bit further away. But there is no army over here that could necessarily challenge me in a head-to-head -head confrontation. Now, I don't want to go too far in Bretonia. I got other Fritz uh, to deal with. Thing is, you might think, oh, Vlad is a problem. He like, there are certainly issues that you gotta deal with in this particular campaign. Absolutely, undeniably so. But that doesn't mean you have to deal with them instantly. And that's a particularly important point. Now, I am likely going to get a rebellion here, but hey, guess what? Gotrek and Felix are just gonna... Take that, deal with that particular rebellion, and yeah, I just got a quest that's going to give me a significant advantage over there. Yes. 
And I am... If you ever end up in a situation like this, attack the army outside the settlement. Couple of reasons. Couple of reasons. While you may not get as much post-battle loot as you would, whenever you attack a settlement directly, um, you won't... Well, whenever you attack a settlement directly, you will have a worse auto resolve, but crucially... Like, in, in a case like this, you might get, you know, two battles as opposed to just one. Because, especially if you're fighting the battle manually, which, again, you should. Um, but there's also more to this situation as well. Uh, like, better auto resolve. Also, field battles are just inherently far more fucking interesting to deal with. Uh, Skill-wise, you gotta balance things out. I, I'd say, like, I want to get Honest Steel over here for Carl Franz, because, yes, I am going to get great swords and demi grips. So, you know, I'm starting to wonder if that's even worthwhile. But you just want to get uh, skill points uh, for, you know, the units you're actually going to use. Anyhow, we're gonna move on that particular settlement. Let's just keep getting stuff. Hawkland is gone. Hail to your Let's get um, yes. so. various benefits over here. I could really be a Skaven right now. <laughs> One of the things I like seeing when I'm playing Total War is like, it doesn't matter what you think you're playing, we're all playing Skaven. Like, you, you should play Skaven. And what I'm going to do here is kind of going to be an interesting one. So, you'll see. You now, I've got good relations with Bretonia. But I do want Grungzint. The reason I want Grungzint is because it's obviously pretty damn useful. I am Prince and Emperor. As, um, a, as a settlement because I can trade it to the dwarves. You will know, see what I'm going to do. I should point out, it may not work, <laughs> what I'm about to do, uh, but it's like one of those things that, it's one of those strategies that if you pull it off, it goes so brilliantly well, that it is absolutely worth trying to do it. And if it doesn't, well, you know, at least I tried. Okay, so you can see over there, the vampires are gonna take, try and take their Selma back. I should probably deal with that, honestly, as annoying as it could be over there. Oh, Marienburg is marching over there, so Kemmler is making a comeback. I could get the temporary truce with him if I really wanted to. Alright, another quest belt. True servant of Sigma. Gotrek Gernishan. Never. And? Gotrek and Felix can deal with that. Alright, Musalon. Musalon. Onwards! Alright, Musalon has an entire army right there. We're going to declare war on Leoness. What? Who calls? Make your fucking And get a bunch of priest treaties. So what I'm doing right here is maybe you something you shouldn't do. But I'm gonna do it. <laughs> Regardless. Now this army can't um So we're just gonna wipe out that particular force, get this element to a higher level. Rebellion will trigger soon enough. So if these guys attack, like I'm, I'm expecting Leoness to attack me here. If they don't attack me, whatever, right? It's just that I'll take their capital regardless. Okay, gotta be concerned about that Marienburg army a bit. Just a bit. Now my victory conditions, my short campaign victory condition does require me to deal with Sylvania. 
but I'm not in a hurry to do so. Like, I've come to the realization that in certain campaigns, or in a lot of campaigns, again, the path that the game wants you to go on, as opposed to the path that you should actually go on, two very, very different things. Let's see what they do. Now, Grom has besieged someone. I might want to kick him out. Like, I might want to declare war on him, though that's possibly a difficult, you know, take, right? It's going to be tricky over there. Like, I've come to accept that it's just probably better to, you know, pay the price. Okay, so... Nope. They didn't attack me. Okay, let's arrange that tour. Uh, it would be better if I dealt with them myself, but let's just... Okay. Now, if you're wondering how I'd win this battle, Ignore the Atrasol mods for a second. Well, I have a primarily ranged army in a siege. <laughs> let, let me just say this. Even if I run out of ammunition by the time this battle is over, which can happen. Keep in mind, most of their units are not shielded, so they will take quite a bit of damage. I will take some damage from the walls, but I do have Death Claw, so I can for force them off the walls. Like, that's not a problem. I have enough movement range to just come back again. So, like, what I do is expend the ammunition, get the draw, withdraw, attack again. Now, I don't want to do that in this particular situation, but it is something I can do. Now, what do I want to do here? Why did I go for that? Well, what I want is Grung Zint, and I want to trade it for Leoness. Now, he's not just going to give me Grung Zint, right? That's not just not going to happen like that. Uh, let's see over here. Various diplomatic choices. Yes. I should probably just attack... Like, I could make their lives easier if I destroyed Kemler here, because he doesn't really stand a chance against me. Turn around, deal with that rebellion. Maybe that would be the better choice. Okay, get a diplomatic trade agreement with Miao Ying. Don't attack my Miao Ying. Like, avoid attacking the major cafe and faction. So if you're interacting with them, get our King Conglet, that's pretty useful. So Leoness is dealt with. What we want to get here is a Shrine of Sigmar and I need more money. Which is not really a problem. Okay, so Rebellion is going to happen. <laughs> Make no mistake on that. But I figure, you know, it's probably just for the best if it doesn't happen. So. Like, I am suffering from this, which is not fun, but yeah, just roll with the dice. Is, okay, let's get that silver seal. Just quest battle. Yep, that sucks, but couldn't care. Like, seriously, those units are crap. Like, you might say, oh, halberdiers are good. It's like, yeah, they, they're good if. If you're willing to endure all the other shit that happens with them, I'm just gonna leave a slot open for the Carbo Great Swords. If you're willing to endure all the other shit that comes with that, sure. The problem is, Albadirs are really bad in auto resolve, like incredibly fucking crap units. Now, over here, I'm in a position where I can declare war on Grom. Oh, Leoness has another army? Are you f shitting with me? <laughs> Oh gosh! Like, I didn't expect that one. <laughs> I admit that's a that is a that is an unpleasant surprise right there. Okay. When a faction loses all of its territory, the natural the thing that they're gonna do is attack, um, try and attack territory. Now in this case, they stand no chance. The garrison will destroy them. No, oh, so he's okay. Uh, I guess. <laughs> so. I suppose we're in this crappy situation where he's gonna lose Middenheim. Well, he, where he's lost Middenheim, but taken the Black Pit because Kazrak did just commit suicide against me for reasons. Fun! And we got the full stack, and then we gotta deal with this shit. So, yeah, that's. That is. Uh, although, he might make my life a bit easier over here. Yes. We'll see. Like, I don't want to make any deals with Baston because I want to take them out. Though, I may want to avoid. Let's see what we do. 
I am building some stables in the capital. It's a good idea if you're playing as Bretonian to get those stables. So I just want to sell them something useful. Like actually Lumen and are getting freaking knights. So now with Kemmler's capital under siege, I'm wondering what he's going to do. If he withdraws, fine, I withdraw a deal with Marienburg. Or maybe turn my army around. I don't know. Rebellion would take a couple of turns. Hmm. Huh. Maybe Midland isn't hopeless. Depends on, you know, what plays out, how it plays out. I'm not gonna put my money on the dwarves being able to win that particular battle, though. <laughs> Nothing? Okay. That's There's a weird nasty. one. Alright, you can have your non aggression pact. Alright. Hmm. Alright, so what I expected to happen did happen, and I'm not even gonna get a rebellion. Should have just occupied this element. Fine. Because the conquest penalty w expired, so that's that's the reason that happened in particular. Approach us, friend, and make your offer. Affirmative. That so. Now. Now you may wonder. Men, we must attack. Okay. I didn't expect Leonis. Like that. That's the thing, though. They will obey. About AI factions. Um, one thing. Alright, so they're certainly gonna win that one. Okay. I can do a couple of things, but I'm just going to destroy Kemler right here. Okay. And while I'm not necessarily fond of doing it, wait. Okay, so I'm going to do something no man of the empire should do, but I'm going to declare war on Bretonia for the sake of Grom. Sigma's will. So nice is that war. <laughs> okay. got a plan for you. Here we go. Do you know who I am? I am Prince and Emperor. I could deal with that, but I'm just concerned that Grom would turn around and kick my ass. So, you know, just not not feeling like I know he has an army, so that's the reason yes. I'm not so eager to do that. Also, because Grom might, and I emphasize it. Damn it. Thought I had enough movement range. That's unfortunate. Gonna run out of money in just a second, but um, that's what happens when you push yourself too much. Yes. The war speak plainly. I'm not worried about Nakari, so yeah, we'll just go with that. my father's name. What? Your best. She's at war with Agzag. I think I'm pretty safe to declare war on him. Okay. So no rebellion right here. There's also no settlement. It's unfortunate that... Yeah, he doesn't have Siege Attacker, which is a bit annoying. And so be it. Okay. So, right now I'm going to take... I'm gonna sell the coast territory to Bretonia. And hell, you know what? I might just go defeat Grom. Like, this is one thing to understand. Like, campaign sometimes gets out of your control. Like, Grom may declare war on Mussolini, he may leave it alone. If he had left it alone, I wouldn't have gone for it. But since he's decided to take it, he's put me in a position where, well, I want to declare war on him. So, oh, I gotta go trick and Felix. Damn it. <laughs> that's, um, that's unfortunate, to say the least. That is damned unfortunate, really. Like, I want Baston on one hand, but... Yeah, peace. Like, that's one of the things that 
just kind of happens and gets out of your control. If you're wondering why I'm not, in, well, I'm not agreeing with any diplomatic deals with Nuln, it's there's a reason for it. All right, so they attacked me there. Got their asses wiped. Yeah, reject that. Uh, that's a uh, recruit defeat at Ledger and Lord's Mod. Okay. Uh, and sometimes when you attack an army outside of settlement, you might just be able to win even by the default on resolve, which is a good thing to happen if it does happen because it means you can just you know take the settlement on the same turn. Hmm. Marry. Like, I would sell it to them right now, but it's like I just right. need to wait one turn because Imperial Diplomacy is Only utter Sigma's rubbish. Well. Oh, will. the scalings are advancing. Yep, I'm not too worried. Yes. Welcome. Yes. Welcome. Affirmative. What? Valiant Lord. Okay. I command here. Godtrek Gurnish. Unfortunate. It's no ever be, but it will do. Very unfortunate. Godtrek Gurnish. I'm gonna have to wait one turn. So what do I want to do here? Well, I want to take Rungzent. This is Bretonia. I am its king. For and as you, you can see, he's willing to trade demand, it to me. So I can but so, let's just put that there. Not one step further, stranger. You do not walk my life uh, yeah, no without my blessing, which you don't have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I am with you. So what about this one, though? On well, I want Montfort, which they will trade. Aye. So ultimately, I made money from this per the current trade uh, situation. I'm gonna put the barracks in the minor settlement, get rid of the growth one, upgrade that. Uh, or maybe just keep the growth. And now I'm in a much better situation, actually. To you. I still don't have a so, military alliance with Britannia or the Dwarves, but that's gonna be sorted out soon enough. I see no other option. And here I wait. It may not necessarily be the greatest option in the world, but like with Grom being in the position he's in, <laughs> Sometimes there are limits. Summon the elector counts. But I am just gonna move in closer. Grom should not necessarily attack me. Over there. If he does, it would be rather unfortunate, all things considered. Yeah, I should have gotten rid of that building, but just forgot. <laughs> I know I was gonna forget that one. I knew that was gonna happen. What the Wait, Bastan is still alive. What? Okay. Fair enough. I'll run out of money shortly, but I can sell Wrecker's Approach point to him. And make your offer. So, that's what I'm going to take advantage of. He is also going to lose territory. But as long as he doesn't get wiped out, he's not going to lose more Imperial authority, so I'll take advantage of that. What's, uh... Midland. I'm gonna have to give it back to them, ain't I? Isn't that gonna be a little kick in the balls, so to speak? Okay, so Grom is now... Let's see what he does. It might have actually been a blessing in disguise to not get that military alliance for Britannia because they might declare war on each other. Alright. Uh, not the most pleasant outcome. But, you know, you roll with it. So, I'm gonna defeat uh, Grom right there. Is that a winnable battle? Oh yeah. Like, if he had concentrated both his armies against him, no. But, since he didn't, guess what? I can. And then he gets, he screws me. Lovely. Of all the decisions that could have been made, this was the worst single one. I figure to myself, like, normally I would have moved this army. Like, one, one tip to give you. 
When you take a settlement and you know there's another, uh, there's one last army from the AI faction left out there, uh, move the army outside of the settlement because they're going to besiege it. Or if, if it's a walled settlement. If the army... Okay, so... Yeah, I know. I'm not going to be able to do that, but so be it. And now, Grom is still not there. That's unfortunate. Wait a second. <laughs> I should probably give these items, right? No, I'm going to keep that. Uh, Parl? What? Uh, hello? <laughs> Oh, uh, that's buggy. That is so freaking buggy, it's not even funny. I will do anything for Sigma. Yeah, we'll see about that, buddy. By Sigma's will, come in peace. Indeed. What? I told you. I'm going to need to restart my game. Or rather reload the save. That's gonna be fun. I want to get some rice guard over here, or maybe I should just improve the economy at this point. Because yeah, things are not looking too hot. But what the hell is going on here? Yeah, I think it's just a question of reloading the save. This has happened before, so I know what I'm gonna need to do. So I have taken care of the problem over there with the garrison of Musalon, and now. Various choices do exist in this particular campaign. I could stick around over here and, you know, try and help out um, Bretonia to survive against Bellacor, by the looks of it. Although I could just as well abandon this particular settlement. I don't necessarily have the army to deal with Rom over here. I mean, he's just got a lot of troops and I don't have enough movement range or ammo to deal with him, though I can bring him reinforcements for... Uh, from Gotrick and Felix, and hopefully win with that, because that would certainly take a manual bow. I do have Festus to tackle, but the important point is right now I've stabilized the early game situation, and while um, while they hang on by a Fred over here in Middleland against uh, against Festus, I can try and lay an ambush against them. While they hang on by a Fred over there, I've uh, engineered a good campaign situation right here for myself in order to achieve success. After this point, like, you know, I could just have ignored Bordello, gotten out of here, maybe after dealing with Grom's main army, gotten out of there, and just go deal with the situation in Empire. Like, my next objective would be to take Nuln itself, uh, Maybe even wait a bit more with that, actually. But take no, that's the reason I've left it be for, like I haven't gotten any kind of diplomatic deals with them or anything like that. I do have a confederation avail that's going to be available with uh, Talibayam because I have reached uh, 10 fealty, assuming it hasn't uh, bugged out, and I can go deal with Sylvania. That's the key to a campaign, like engineering these kind of situations and also having a plan, like what do I want to deal with? But keep in mind, your plans can change depending on the dynamics. Like, imagine if, for instance, Kamler hadn't moved his ar hadn't declared war on Marienburg and, you know, marched over there. I wouldn't have bothered with him otherwise. I would have just marched him against Marienburg and then against Festus. Or imagine if the dwarves hadn't take Mo uh, taken Montfort. I would have taken Montfort earlier. I wouldn't have bothered Marienburg. That's also something that's important to understand with a campaign. It's all about taking advantage of the situation that you do have at your disposal. So, for instance, me taking advantage of the Leoness situation to take the city and also get some money, that was useful. It was a bit unfortunate that Grom did also declare war on Musulong, because things would have been a lot better had that not happened. But still, yeah, opportunities arise in a campaign. And yeah, after this point, like, yeah, I just want to deal with uh, Festus one way or another. Cosine Sanya, don't forget to subscribe, like, and enable notifications. Stay tuned for more. 
Important in terms of army recruitment, always go for units that are worthwhile, just gonna mention this. Um, like for the Empire, it's archers, for greenskins, it's goblin, all various racial specific things, right? Hero capacity is kinda important, it, it's not kinda important, it is very important to get a lot of heroes as quickly as possible, though that will take some turns, like a dozen turns, maybe you can get them earlier, maybe it takes longer, depends on which campaign you're playing, which race you're playing all that kind of stuff so right here like this campaign is effectively over the reason it's effectively over is i've gotten to the critical point where i've got free armies right and even if i lose one of them you know fighting fastness for instance right let's say he attacks me over here and i can't necessarily defeat him though with toddy by my side we should be able to do a significant amount of damage to him uh, but assuming you know i can't defeat him necessarily over there or he doesn't walk in my ambush, right? Like, you know, there are things that can happen. But right now, with the heroes unlocked, uh, with with all of that kind of stuff unlocked, with me working with, uh, you know, it would have been great to get clergy of Sigmar, but still, you know, I'll get that later. I can even get more heroes with the Shrine of Sigmar, all that kind of good stuff, right? So it is all available with another Shrine of Sig Sigmar. So this is the key to a campaign. It's about surviving the early game, making the right decisions there to end up in a strong position. Like over here, like it's turn 18, 16 turn, sixteen settlements taken over, occupy, loot, sacked, in order to march towards a short campaign victory condition. Stay tuned for more.